And I'm wondering as a, a defensive player, knowing the defense wins championships, any chance this Tampa Bay Buccaneer offense is overhyped? You know, Jason, I, I won't use the word overhyped uh, just yet, uh, just because you have to respect, you know, the fact of what Tom and Gronkowski did together for all those years in New England. Uh, but what I will say is the Bucs have done a great job of building this football team in all phases, which I like to say the four phases of building. You know, they check the box and you can give them an A. One, they address the, their current team by keeping the defense together uh, with the veterans, signing JPP back, Dominic and Sue, keeping those guys together, uh, Shaquille, you know, Shaq Barrett, uh, getting him back. So they've done a great job of keeping a nucleus of that defense together to help grow with that young uh, secondary. The linebackers are going to be better. Avante David, Devin White, uh, another year he's not a rookie. And you saw last year when he got healthy, how much of an impact player he can be. So they're addressed in keeping that team. Then the next bill is free agency. And they swung for the fences and they hit a home run. <laughs> you know, in getting Tom Brady in terms of what this football team needs you know, right now. And they're putting all the chips to the middle of the table and making a run for it. And then Tom swung for the fences and convinced them <laughs> to go get uh, his number one target in terms of Rob Gronkowski. And I think Bruce Arians is smart enough to manage how Gronk will be used uh, within this offense because he's never had this type of player uh, in all of his previous offense. And then you got to give them credit with the draft. They checked the box right there, too addressing the offensive line needs with their first pick and getting depth and with the running back position and the other young players in the draft. So right now, uh, they've checked the boxes in all three areas. And the fourth area be whenever they're able to get back together and see how all these things fit together physically. So I got to give them credit. I won't use the word uh, overhype, but I will definitely say you have to respect all the moves that they've made thus far in improving this football team for 2020. Uh, hate to disagree with you, but I think there is a great chance this team is is hyped. Let's let's look at this one category, and it's fake. It's focused on Tom Brady and the way that he likes to play the game. Look at his yards per attempt. Look how Tom Brady wants to get the ball out quickly and to the right open receiver. Now, if you look at the receiving core of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and Jameis Winston, Jameis Winston will throw that deep ball and will give you a 50-50 ball opportunity. That's not Tom Brady. If you look at his yards per attempt last year, it was his lowest of his career since 2002. He likes to dink it, likes to dunk, short, intermediate, not the deep balls, which is a strength of this team. So if Tom Brady, because of this offseason being disrupted, is not comfortable with his deep threats and decides to play his style of ball and not the Tampa style of ball that was number one in the passing attack last year, ooh, it could get off to a rough start. Gronkowski may not be the same coming off of a red shirt campaign. That's the only category, the only lens I'm looking at this team and seeing if he is going to be as daring with the football as Jameis Winston was. Marcellus, I, I will say this. Jameis redefined the 50-50 ball, and they actually called it a 25-75 ball down in Tampa <laughs> uh, when Jameis was there. <laughs> but yeah, oh, here's where I agree with you. And, 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 Derek, I want you to respond. This is where I agree with Marcellus. He, he said it. He touched on it briefly. I think this compromised offseason is going to hurt not just Tom Brady, but offenses around the league. Defenses always start out ahead of offenses. Just go out and make plays, run the football, get after the quarterback. We're going to play some man-to-man, -man, blah, blah, blah. I just think, particularly for Brady, but for all NFL offenses, the defenses are going to be out ahead of them, and it's going to be even more pronounced for Tampa Bay, and that's where I think maybe this offense won't hit its stride. Well, that's where I disagree with with both you guys, and I'm going to speak for myself and the Bucks. I think by them keeping 90% of their defense, which if you look towards the last eight games of the season, 
they finished in the top five in every category. So I don't think the Bucs will have a problem with the defense carrying the team until the offense catches up. Uh, secondly, I think it's time for an evolution in terms of the assets that the Bucs have at the receiver position. Not every ball that they were thrown were balls that were down the field. A lot of their explosive plays, these guys, uh, whether it was Godwin or Evans, they broke tackles and got a lot of yards after the catch. The problem, obviously, that everybody, Jason, you alluded to, was Tom would do, would do a better job. And again, I believe this so because of his experience of protecting the football and giving this offense extended possessions that they did not have last year and turning those into points. And I and again, uh, Marcellus, I do think these coaches, particularly Coach Aarons, is smart enough to understand that, yes, Gronkowski may not be the Gronkowski of old, and you have to manage that load in terms of putting him in successful positions to succeed, What again, whatever that may be. But, yes, good luck. Uh, I think everything that you said, uh, offenses, all offenses will definitely be behind the defenses because of the missed time in OTAs. Derek, let's address the elephant in the room. Not me, Tom Brady's age. Uh, he's going to be 43 hmm. this year. Hmm. Uh, and we've had Mike Evans say that Tom Brady is a franchise changer. Can you be a franchise changer at age 43? Do you agree with Mike Evans that Tom Brady is a franchise changer at 43? Uh, my answer to that is no, I can't agree with him because it's going to take everybody. And going through changing a franchise, we had to do that together. It just wasn't Derrick Brooks. It just wasn't Warren Sapp, Rondé Barber, you know, John Lynch, Simeon Rice. It was all of us collectively. We even went through a changing of head coaches uh, at that time to be a part of a franchise changer. So uh, I would disagree with him in this regard. It's going to take more uh, than just one player to do that. But, yes, he could be a difference maker on offense. Obviously, in terms of his decision-making, I think that can be a difference. But in terms of turning around an entire franchise, I don't think one player uh, has the capability to do that, period. Man, I love me some Derrick Brooks, but I got to disagree with you again, Hall of Famer. Uh, think about this. Like, so, <laughs> someone has to go out there and start the fire. We can name the flames, but somebody got to get it ignited. And that's Tom Brady, and it's, it's in the culture the thoughts, the actions, the decisions, but more so it's the ignition of that imagination. I've been there before. You certainly have been there before. When I went to San Diego and I looked at that defense and before I even stepped on the field, before you lace up the cleats, you start saying, Junior Seau, Rodney Harrison, my workouts, my motivation, my preparation, my mindset – was just in a different place because it's a cultural change. And when you see Tom Brady walk in that building, I got to take these players at their words. They're saying we feel different. We're thinking different. Guess what that means? You're going to move different. And I think that it is all going to come from an inspiration to that imagination. Kind of like when you're growing up, people used to say, you need to leave your neighborhood, get exposed to something. And when you get exposed to something new, you come back to the old differently <laughs> and better. This is an underprivileged Tampa Bay Bucks team that finally left the neighborhood. Tom Brady taking them places, man, right up here. Well, you just said earlier. I, I, I think Marcel. I mean, you, you change it up on me, you know, in terms of your feelings on Tom. But, you know, just generally speaking, it's not going to happen, you know, overnight. And to say that he is the one to do it by himself, I think that's unfair. Let's not forget, this is the first time in 20 years that he's going to a different culture. And you just can't expect him to just pick up the bicycle and ride it the same way. It's very different. I want to see how Tom performs in this heat down here on a daily basis. No seasonal change. I mean, it's just all the little nuances. You can tell right now, like, he's not used to being bothered 
and it's privacy being invaded like it's been since here in Tampa because they're used to seeing their superstars. Well, Tom is not used to that all the time. So, again, going through all those adjustments, I think it's going to take time. I just would not automatically stamp him as a franchise changer for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And you're talking day one. I just got to see it happen over time. Well, I, I, I disagree with Mike Evans, or I disagree with you for this reason. I, I, I agree with Mike Evans. What he's talking about is DB's not running the other direction with pick six touchdowns will change this franchise. <laughs> and so the, the franchise is going to be changed just on that alone, which is a perfect segue into our final topic, Derek. Please defend your boy, your Florida State Seminole brother, Jameis Winston. We have the question labeled here. Think Jameis Winston can be a franchise QB again. I wouldn't have added the word again here. I would have just left it at, can Jameis Winston be a franchise QB? He had the job, but I never considered him a franchise QB in Tampa. He ain't been a franchise player since his freshman year at Florida State or whatever, the year he led him to the national championship. But what's the future like for Jameis Winston? <laughs> You know, I, I will defend Jameis uh, again to, to the end of this earth because I've seen it since he was 16 years old uh, coming to camp at Florida State. And I think right now is the perfect time for Jameis to be a student. Uh, before, he could not, you know, divulge all the time into being a student because he had to go out there and play. He had to learn on the go. He had to deal with all the pressures of not just playing the quarterback, but being a leader. And now he's in a situation where none of those pressures are upon him. He gets an opportunity to truly learn the game from a different perspective from two of the best people in the game, meaning Sean Payton and Drew Brees. And I'm not comparing it to a, a Teddy Bridgewater situation, obviously, because you know, Teddy now has an opportunity to lead another franchise. But I think personally for Jameis having this opportunity without all these added pressures to me will benefit him uh, in the long run. While I think he could earn the right to be a, a starting quarterback again in this league and will let the franchise, uh, you know, characteristic, let that play itself out. But I think... Right now, at this point in his career, I think this is the best move for him. And in talking with him uh, about this situation, man, he can't be more uh, excited about this opportunity because, again, this is newfound territory for him, and he's embracing this uh, with open arms and an open mind. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. And be sure to check out more of the best clips from Speak For Yourself or go watch a few segments from our other shows on FS1.